Hello and welcome back. And today's part one of a series of videos doing some very quick experiments with the newer generation of Synology NAS. This is going to be featuring the DS3622XS Plus. I know they're on screen. I think somewhere maybe up there. Again, I've got the angles all wrong. You can see the official page. But moreover, if we move this camera all the way to the other side of this room, bringing it around on my chair, there is the NAS set up there on the table. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at unofficial memory. That's right, it's quite a taboo subject normally. We're going to be looking at installing some unofficial memory inside this NAS. Now, why is that important? Well, because all, pretty much all current generation Synology NAS and the last few generations before it are pretty strict when it comes to memory. For example, if I go here on the official compatibility page, what I can do is if go into the 3622XS Plus there on screen, then select the option of RAM module, click find device, you will see that the only memory currently listed as compatible is their own memory there. So you are pretty strict about this. If you use unsupported memory, you're running an unsupported configuration and therefore there's a very good chance they are not prepared to support your warranty or help be able to supply, uh, supply support to you. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about this subject, but in the past, I have tried to use unofficial memory from brands such as Crucial and uh, Kingston and a bunch of other brands as well. And in today's video, I am going to be testing out that third party unsupported memory or unofficial memory, if you will. And in today's video, I'm going to be testing three different kinds of module. I'm going to be testing Crucial 16 gigabyte modules, two of those in there, and then going to be testing two Kingston 16 gigabyte modules and then finally I'm going to go for the super end of the budget spectrum to time tech modules there all 16 gig each they're all DDR4 2666 megahertz memory none of them are ECC it has to be said um, but I'm going to be testing all of these modules in that NAS the other thing to bear in mind is the system arrived with 16 gig of DDR4 ECC memory by default however that memory is based very much in an inaccessible area and the two available empty uh, slots on the side of the system are occupied by expansion um, memory slots there. They're not the actual base level memory that is inside the system and you effectively have to take the whole system apart to access it. If you watch my review, you'll know what I'm on about. But the first one we're going to be testing is going to be that first crucial module memory. So if we bring that round there, as you can see, there are our two crucial sticks installed inside this system. So the first thing we want to do is power it on. And we're going to leave that to power that on there. And that should take somewhere in the region of about three to five minutes for this to boot. So I apologise if every time I walk away we're moving away from the mic. The microphone is here. So you'll have to bear with me every time I've moved away and the sound goes a bit ropey. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Synology Assistant there. Uh, that was some testing we did on a previous NAS there. And then what we're going to do is come back to it and we're going to be refreshing this until we've got access to that NAS. And what we want to see is, one, is the system going to boot at all? Two, if it does boot, can we see the memory? And three, we're just going to do a very quick allocation of that memory to a software or service. Again, this video is not recommending that you use third-party memory on the Synology NAS system, largely because it can kind of effectively knacker your support and warranty, and no one wants that, especially on an enterprise-level product. But also... None of this video, I'm not going to be going into the depths. I could, as mentioned in a comment recently, log in via SSH and go in and test allocation of threads to that memory. I could create a VM and assign that memory, but I'm trying to keep a very straight line here, supporting people that want to go their own way on memory and those that might not. So it's very important that we try and maintain a balance there. So I'm not going to go into too much depth of this memory. If this works, or we tried some of the other ones and they all work fine. If all work, then maybe we can delve a little bit deeper into this. But right now, while I've been talking to you, the thing that concerns me is I've not heard this system beep. And the fact I've not heard it beep yet is a worry. Because normally by now, I would have heard the system beep. That's not a good sign. That could well mean that we're not going to have any success here today. But what I'm going to do now is fast forward for you guys maybe 5 to 10 minutes right now. 
what am I looking at here? It is 121, there we go, uh, 127 even. So I'm gonna fast forward, and then what we're gonna see is if this boots, what we see when we log in. Let's fast forward. Well, I've given it a while, but to be perfectly honest, I'm pretty sure this system isn't going to boot. If we bring this back round here, as we can see, bringing it all the way around, all we're getting is that blue flickering light. We're not getting any kind of formative loading there. So I think for now, what I'm gonna do is power this bad boy down. Again, I do not recommend that you do this, but pulling that power button down there for a little bit there will power the device down. And once that's done, what we'll be able to do is make our way into those memory slots. Let's get that open there on the side, remove that memory. And what we're gonna do without replacing the lid there on the side, we're just gonna go ahead and reboot this NAS. And then from that point, we're gonna be able to reboot it and then see what happens now. It's going back to the default memory. Just make sure that one, what we've done right now has not damaged the system in any way, but two, just to make sure the system is indeed going to boot. I will say that one of the earliest signs that I've noticed right now is that the fan is not going at full length. It's normally before during the boot sequence of the DS3622XS Plus. Generally what the NAS will do is it will boot with the fans on on relative full for around about 60 seconds which is what we've just seen and then the system will power the fans down as it goes into the initialization. Right now, I'm not hearing those fans anymore, which largely to me indicates that the system is going to boot. The fans are on, but now they're not on the full fan test mode that they were on and indeed stuck on when we were using that other memory. So what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna give this a few minutes and we're gonna see if this beeps again. Normally we should hear that beep in the next minute or two, indicating that the system has fully booted. And then from there, if that does work, we're gonna go into the system, see what the system says in the logs. And then regardless of what it says, we're gonna test out those other memory modules. So I'm gonna sit here and wait for the boot. You hear that, you hear that beep? That is a nice sign. I'm not sure how well that carried across on the microphone, but I just heard the beep. It was around about 60 seconds ago. So let's now log into our NAS. Let's open up the search functionality there. to have a quick look. It's gonna search the local area network and boom, there is our NAS. Double click and we can now log into it as normal. So let's go ahead and log in and see if there's anything in the logs to indicate any kind of uh, stuff that we've seen so far. There may be the mention of the improper shot, shutdown, but we'll have a look. As you may see, as you can see, there's mention of a drive that's not on the compatibility list, but we will be talking about that. You can see the improper shutdown there when I was doing a UPS test for a video coming out soon. But overall, I think again, the system clearly did not, uh, the system either was unable to or was disallowed of booting because of that memory. There's the default 16 gig, but the upgrade there, the unofficial third party memory, it didn't seem to want to play the game. So let's shut this system down now. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and try the next memory there. I've just accidentally done that wrong. Um, what I'm gonna do is fast forward now to the installation of our next memory test. This is the Kingston. Okay, so we've got the next memory pack we installed. This is that Kingston memory as mentioned. As you can see there, if we move the microphone out the way, there is the memory installed, getting nice and close. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and power the device on. And now we're gonna make our way back to the desk. And the first thing we're looking for, of course, is whether that uh, fan there in the background is going to cease or if the fan is going to continue to spin which was largely the indicator that the previous test had gone wrong so let's remove obs there as we can see there's the power down screen from earlier so again we're just going to wait for it there i'll be honest the fact that i can't hear those fans stopping is not a good sign uh, we may have a repeat of last time, and don't worry, we are going to see through all three tests. I know this is a bit boring, but we've got to check everything. But right now, that's not a fantastic indication right there of this memory working. And I do think Synology may well, at least on the XS series, maybe for the rest of their series, actually knuckle down and stopped people using unofficial memory. But that's something that I think what we're going to do is fast forward 
five minutes for you guys there to see if those fans are ever going to stop and the system's going to boot. But for now, let's see you in five minutes. And unsurprisingly, on our second attempt with that memory, the system still continues not to boot. We can hear the fans there in the background just sort of spinning around, but that's really it. The system isn't booting anywhere beyond the blue light at the top. No hard drive recognition, nothing. And indeed, you can't even perform uh, the memory check facility that's built into Synology's Assistant program. For those that aren't aware, when you're using Synology Assistant, you can do a memory test on the system but if the system isn't being listed by Synology's assistant because it hasn't booted we can't even perform those so although we know what the outcome's almost certainly going to be I'm going to power those down and get the third budget SSD installed there that is the time tech let's get that installed now okay let's launch into an almost certain losing battle it's time for memory test three that budget time tech model there we are there is the memory installed as before. There is the power button as before. Let's get that powered up there. Let's grab the mic and start making our way back. So while we're doing this, it is worth remembering that if you are going to go for a NAS like this, as good as it sounds to have like a beastly Xeon powered 24 bay NAS system, sorry about leaving OBS open again. I'm sure you're seeing lots of multiple picture in picture there. As useful as that can be to go for such a powerful NAS, the idea that you might go for memory, you know, upgrades throughout its life is actually fairly likely. It's a very powerful system if you can use a virtual machine use, be it with Synology's own, or you're going to use your own kind of VMware Hyper-V kind of export it's set up there and Synology fair play they do supply their own memory yes it is more expensive yes it can occasionally be quite tough to get hold of let's be honest but still they are able to provide those memory modules so how do we feel about memory upgrades like this being limited well mixed feelings it's much like the hard drives isn't it I think a lot of people who go for an enterprise level solution generally always going to buy first party products they want the brand to not try to say to them sorry we can't support you and they'll play a straight game but i think there's a number of people out there that will be buying a NAS solution like this maybe with an old pc builder frame of mind that are going to want to not cut corners but certainly want to go for their own choice and selection of upgrade parts and although i have kind of mixed feelings um, about Synology and their hard drives i think they are good hard drives i just think it's a shame that they won't allow any other hard drives as well i think with the memory it makes a little bit more sense i think a lot of the memory upgrades on Synology nas systems at this enterprise level i can kind of almost understand why they've been more restrictive about memory upgrades things like ecc for example and because generally the users that are going to use systems like this are going to be using it for high-end business use and therefore if you start using memory that maybe is a little bit more uh, budget friendly it might be the thing that brings down your storage system if your data is that important to you then restrictions unsupported listings whatever the term you want to use makes a lot more sense at the enterprise level maybe not the whole of Synology's portfolio but I think everyone has their own opinion on that but for now I can only hear that fan whizzing around I can't see the system booting there at all if we click search Almost certainly the NAS isn't going to appear. We've not heard the beep. I think we can all pretty much agree that third-party unofficial memory is not going to do the do on this. Again, all of the parts that I've utilized today are linked in the description. The Crucial, Crucial 16 gig uh, DDR4 2666 megahertz module. The Kingston KCP4. All of these are dual ranked as well. And finally, the packages over there, that TimeTech 16 gig module as well. But let's wrap things up. Again, as mentioned, we are going to be doing a few other little tests with this box. We're going to be looking at unofficial drives next. We're going to be installing some third party drives inside this non Synology drives to see what the system does. Um, do, so do stay tuned for that. If you want to learn more, click subscribe to the bell to be notified. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. And of course, free advice section over on NAS Compares. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time.